Well, welcome back, folks. Jaylan Bio here talking to you a little bit about some complex patterns of inheritance. So not everything is inherited the way that we talked about in our last video. What you'll find is that there are lots of different ways that characteristics and traits are inherited from parents to offspring. And we're going to talk about three specific ways today as well as being able to perform three new types of Punnett squares. We're going to be looking at traits that are incompletely dominant, traits that are co-dominant, and traits that are sex or X-linked. So let's get started. By the end of this video, you should be able to understand that there are a variety of ways that alleles and traits are inherited from parents, and you should also be able to evaluate and complete a variety of different Punnett squares. So just some key vocabulary terms for you. We're going to talk about incomplete dominance, sex linkage, co-dominance, and polygenic traits, just to name a few. So let's talk about some different types of ways that traits are inherited from a parents to offspring. And the first one is known as incomplete dominance. Now, the rules for doing Punnett squares are always going to be exactly the same. That never changes. The only difference here is that an individual who is heterozygous expresses an intermediate phenotype. What that means is that their phenotype is somewhere in between the dominant and the recessive. So an example over here on the right is snapdragon flowers. If we have two big R alleles, it is going to be red. Two lowercase r's for homozygous recessive is going to be white. But one big R and one little r is pink. Now if this were normal Mendelian inheritance, the dominant would mask the recessive. So those that are heterozygous would be red. But because this is an incomplete dominance, it will be pink. Now it will tell you this in the problem, which makes it a little bit easier to understand and a little bit easier to follow. It all goes back to making sure you RTFQ. Read the freaking question. Let's do a practice problem. So again, let's read the question here. Black roses are incompletely dominant to white roses. So it tells you in the problem what's going on here. This is incompletely dominant. It also tells you what the intermediate phenotype is, which is gray. What is the result of a cross between a black rose and a white rose? Well, we need to first assign letters just like we always do. Let's call the black roses, big R, and the white roses, little r. And the question is asking, what is the result of a cross between a black rose and a white rose? Well, in order to be a black rose, remember we have to have two capital R's, and we're going to cross that with the white rose, which has to be two lowercase r's. Remember, the intermediate phenotype is gray. That's going to be big R, little r. All right? So let's build our Punnett square. Put our letters in. So we have our white rose on the top, and our black rose on the side. And now we're going to cross them, just like what we did in the previous video. All right, that says, what is the result of the cross here? So let's go with genotype and phenotype. Now, just like before, we have three possible genotypes. We can be homozygous dominant, two big letters, heterozygous, a big letter and a small letter, or homozygous recessive, two lowercase letters. In this case, 100% of our offspring are heterozygous, big R, little r, okay? If you look at the phenotype, in this instance, remember there are three possible phenotypes. That's one of the differences between incomplete dominance and Mendelian genetics is that we have three possible phenotypes here. We can either be black, white, or gray. In this case, because they're all heterozygous, 100% will be gray. So just like that, the steps are still the same. The only difference is that now we have an intermediate phenotype. We have one that is in between the dominant and recessive. Codominant traits work in a very similar fashion. The only difference is that with codominance, multiple traits can be dominant to something else. All right, which means that if we inherit both alleles, both are expressed. It's not a mixture, it is both. So for example here, blood typing is a classic example of this. A and B are both dominant to O. So if I inherit an A allele and an O allele, I'll have type A blood. If I inherit a B allele and an O allele, I'll have type B blood. If I inherit two A's, 
I'll have A blood. Two Bs, I'll have B blood. If I inherit two O's, I'll have O blood. If I inherit an A and a B, I will have type A, B blood. Okay? So look at the example down here below. Phenotypes and genotypes, we'll take a look at those. There's a white chicken, WW, black chicken, BB. But the difference here is that this is a speckled chicken, meaning it has both black and white feathers associated with it. That would be BW. That's different than incomplete dominance where the chicken would be gray as opposed to black and white. Remember, in codominance, both alleles are expressed. In this particular instance, we typically use two different letters as opposed to the same letters. So you'll see that when we go ahead and do some practice problems. An individual with pure A blood is crossed with an individual with O blood. What are the possible blood types of the offspring? Now, there's something that's kind of given you in here. Remember, anytime we deal with blood, you should know that that's incompletely dominant. Okay. Now, the rules for this are still the same. The, what's nice is that the genotypes are already given to you. So we can make this Punnett square pretty easily. and solve our problem. Remember what we talked about here is that both A and B are dominant to O. So in this case, all of my offspring are going to have type A blood. Simple enough. But what if I didn't give you this information here? Well, there are two possible problems you're going to have to complete because there's two ways you can have A blood, right? You can either be AA or AO. So you need to take that into consideration as you go through and complete this problem. Is that you have to do two different Punnett squares because I don't give you the genotype. We know that the person has type A blood, but they can have the genotype either AA or AO. Okay. Now in some instances, you may see people use this notation as well. Is it for O, we just use lowercase i's, and then for uh, this, sometimes people use I with a capital A next to it, okay? It just depends on what you've seen in the past. I do not care which way you do it because you get the same results either way, okay? Either way, you go through and complete this is fine as long as you make sure you get the right answer going forward. So keep these things in mind. Again, the rules are still the same. The only difference is that with codominance, we have two alleles that are expressed as dominant. The last type of traits that we are going to look at are sex-linked traits. Now, sex-linked traits are only found on the X chromosome. Males, remember, are XY and females are XX, so we need to include these when we go through and complete our Punnett square. Now, dominant and recessive all still works the same, but we need to keep in mind that these are only alleles that are expressed on the X chromosome. They're not expressed on the Y. Now, that's problematic for a couple reasons. Well, primarily for men. Most of these traits are expressed in men because they only have one X chromosome. So if they inherit a recessive allele, there's no possibility for a dominant allele to mask it out like you would in women because women have two X chromosomes where men only have one. Females can be carriers, men cannot. If men are carrying it, they will express it because they only, again, have one X chromosome. So we take a look over here on the right. Uh, one classic example of an X-linked trait is colorblindness. And here, if you are not red, green, colorblind, you'll see a 74 in that picture. Also, just to keep in mind, colorblindness is the code for the video. So keep in mind that colorblindness is the code for the video. Make sure that you write that down in your video notes. Now, again, we can perform Punnett squares with this as well. So let's see what we have moving forward. Hemophilia is an X-linked recessive genetic disorder. Okay, that's important information. Cross a heterozygous female with a normal male. And then it's asking us to determine the possible combinations of the offspring. All right. Well, notice it tells you right here it is an X-linked recessive genetic disorder. In case you don't know, hemophilia is a blood disorder. Uh, it severely limits the amount of platelets that can be produced and then could cause some really severe bleeding issues with people. Uh, it's commonly known as like the royal disease because it's been passed down in the royal family of, of Europe for the royal families of Europe for quite a bit of time. But I digress. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a letter. So for hemophilia, we're going to use big H and that is going to represent normal. How do I know that the capital letter will be normal. Well, it says that hemophilia is recessive, which means that the lowercase h is going to be hemophilia.
All right. It says cross a heterozygous female with a normal male. So our female, remember, is XX. We're going to cross that with a male, which is XY. Normal male means that they'll have a capital H on their X chromosome. And we're going to have a heterozygous female, which means that they have one big letter and one lowercase. Okay? So you see how this works out? We used our X and Y chromosomes, but we use the alleles uh, almost like exponents on the X and Y chromosomes. So now we put them into our Punnett square and cross them. I'll leave a little more room for these because these can get a little bit big. So let's put dad here. Let's put mom here. And we're going to cross these just like we would before. The interesting thing about this is that we now have information on inheritance patterns with sex. So we can look at what will our male offspring have, what will our female offspring have, etc. Okay. Now since determine the possible combinations of the offspring, we've kind of already done that. But there's lots of questions that could be asked of you here. So for example, if I asked what percentage of my offspring will have hemophilia? Well, the only one that's going to have hemophilia is this one. Okay, it has a lowercase h and nothing else to mask it, so it will have hemophilia. All the rest of them will be normal. So 25% of my offspring will have hemophilia. If I were to ask my percentage of males that will have hemophilia, keep in mind that there are only two possible male combinations here, this one and this one. Okay, so one out of two males would have it, so the percentage of males that would have it would be 50%. Okay. What percentage of my offspring would be carriers? Remember, carriers don't express the trait, but have a recessive allele. That would be 25%. The only one that would be a carrier would be this one down here. Okay. Now, if I were to ask what percentage of females, again, there are only two females here. So it would be one half. Okay. So lots of things to keep in mind here. Just keep in mind, make sure you read the question very, very, very carefully. The last bit I'm going to cover with you guys today is the term polygenic trait. Now, polygenic traits are traits that are coded with more than one set of alleles. So think about hair color or skin color. Now, I know we've used some of these as examples before, but there are lots of different types of hair color, that there's not just one allele that, that goes with hair color. People aren't don't just have brown hair or black hair or blonde hair. There's strawberry blonde, dirty blonde, red hair. Uh, you know, dark, jet, black hair, all kinds of different traits. Same thing with skin color. People can be a variety of different skin colors, and so there's a variety of different alleles that code for those particular skin colors. So just kind of keep those things in mind, and those are known as polygenic traits. Poly, because that term means more than one. So hopefully you get an idea that traits are inherited in a variety of different ways. Keep in mind that incomplete dominance is a mixture of alleles, Codominance results in multiple expressed alleles, and X-link traits are only found on the X chromosome, and that polygenic traits have multiple sets of genes. Hopefully you got a good idea of what's going on in this video. Again, lots of different ways that traits and alleles can be inherited. We'll talk to you guys next time in our next video over pedigrees. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.